The story of Yusuf alayhi salam is very powerful. First of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, dedicated a whole surah in the Qur'an for Surah Yusuf. Almost there's nothing in the Qur'an that is exclusively, there's no surah in the Qur'an that's exclusively for one complete story. And surah, I mean, the story of Yusuf occurs only in Surah Yusuf as a story. That's the only time it occurs. Whereas if you look at the story of Musa alayhi salam, it's all over the Qur'an in so many other surahs. And the story of Isa alayhi salam, the same in so many other surahs. So there is something special about Surah Yusuf. So <clears throat> the story of Yusuf alayhi salam is very powerful in the sense that it relates to the life of every one of us. Every one of us. And Yusuf alayhi salam went through a lot of traumas in his life, but he was not traumatized. He went through a lot of traumatic experiences in his life, but he was not traumatized. He went through a lot of down times, as we would like to call them, but he was happy and he was content. And he went through a lot of challenging circumstances and instead of being broken down, he actually grew. He grew. And when everything seemed to be against him, the reality of affairs turned out to be for him. So things were happening for him, not to him. Not to him. And there are secrets why this is happening. There are secrets why this is happening. Surah Yusuf teaches us three secrets. Three things that if we learn them, hold on to them and apply them, Surah Yusuf or the story of Yusuf can play again in our lives. The success of Yusuf salam, can play also in our lives. And really these three secrets are the basic tools with which you can handle any situation in life. Literally. So Yusuf salam, you will find through all the circumstances and the events that Yusuf went through, he was actually achieving these things by means of three tools that we're going to share. And these are the secret of Yusuf Just in brief, first he was taken away from his father. By who? His own brothers. They conspired against him. They took him. They throw him in the well. They deceived his father. They played a game. He was left in the well. Then he was taken out of the well and he was sold as a slave. So from the son of a prophet who was promised prophethood into a slave. So he's taken by that caravan and he's sold in the slave market in Egypt. Not only a free man, but a prophet or someone who's promised to be a prophet. And now he goes down into this cascade of negative events to the point where he loses his freedom. He loses himself. He has no, slave means you don't own yourself. Someone else owns you. You're a property. You're just like this. Someone owns you. You don't have any choice. You don't have any say on your life. And he's taken to the house of Al-Aziz. Al-Aziz, sort of a minister in Egypt, a very important, influential person in Egypt, Al-Aziz. So he's taken and he's still young. So he grows in this house as a servant and as a slave who has no say, who has no choice. He just has to obey and do whatever he's commanded. Then when he becomes an adult, he's offered... Such a difficult and trying fitna. And what is it? The wife of his own master, who is also his master. She is his master. She commands him, he has to obey. She develops this affection and this love towards him. This physical attraction. She sets him up in a way, she invites him for fahisha, for zina. What does she do? She closes all doors and windows. She says, here you go. He's supposed to obey, he has no say. There's a power imbalance. It's not like, oh, no, I don't feel like it. Oh, I don't want to do that. No, you're my slave. You don't even have a choice. You can't even express yourself in this point. She commanded him, go ahead now. Still with this power imbalance, Yusuf alayhi salam, he's connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's connected to Allah. So he says, ma'ad Allah. He says, I seek refuge in Allah. Innahu rabbi ahsana mathwai. Allah has been good to me. Allah has been good to me. I'm not going to violate the laws and the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he realizes that if he stays in that position, there will be a temptation. There will be the temptation of being a man, you know, presented with a woman who calls him to herself. The temptation of him having less power in front of her and the pressure that he, she could exercise on him. All of this was a temptation. So he decided to get himself out of that. He rushes to the door. He finds his master by the door. Straight away she finds, she's caught now, she wants to free herself, she wants to 
past the buck, she says, he was trying to rape me. He was trying to rape me. So he's accused falsely now. Yusuf Islam speaks up for himself. And he says, no, it was her. So they call upon someone from her family, a wise man, let's find out, investigate what happened. And he said, they found out basically it was her mistake because his shirt was ripped from behind. So she was chasing him. But they said, you know, don't expose that, don't talk about that. This is the wife of this influential man, the wife of the minister. It's a political, you know, slander now. There's issues. No, keep quiet about this. Yusuf alayhi salam, don't open your mouth. Then she's, she's not done with him. She decides to take it on him, to re take revenge. So she sets him up in the presence of other women because they were talking about her. The, the news seeped out into people. They started saying, oh, she's interested in her slave boy. This is the wife of Al-Aziz. Now, she, she said, and so, some women are very intelligent. They know how to stage things. So she decided to set them up together, Yusuf and the women. So she gets out of it. So she brings them. She offers them, they were preparing some food, they were using a knife to cut some stuff. She commands Yusuf to walk in front of them. He goes, walks past them, they're taken by his beauty. This is not a human being. And the Prophet ﷺ, by the way, in his journey in Al Mi'raj, when he made the Isra and the Mi'raj, when he ascended to heavens, he saw Prophet Yusuf. He says, Fara'aytu Yusuf. فَإِذَا هُوَ قَدْ أُعْطِيَ شَطْرَ الْحُسْنِ Yusuf was given half of beauty. So some scholars who commented in this hadith, they said Allah created beauty for humans, certain type of beauty for humans. He gave half of it for humanity and half of it for Yusuf. So he was extremely handsome. So they saw him, they couldn't, you know, they, they couldn't, they were taken by his beauty. So they were cutting some vegetables or whatever. They ended up cutting their own hands, their own fingers. And because of that, uh, of the beauty, they were taken by the beauty, they didn't feel the pain. And by the way, this is a human experience. It's not unique to them. Literally, when our attention is taken by something, we can actually stop feeling the pain. And this, this is what they call pain suppression, by the way. And now, they were talking about the wife of Al-Aziz. They are trapped and take, taken by the beauty of Yusuf. They are trapped now. So the news started spreading about them. They turned it against Yusuf that he's trying to, you know, attract women. He's trying to set women up. So they said the only way to you know, deal with the situation is to get him convicted. If he's found guilty in the court, that means, Yarhamukullah, if he's found guilty in the court, that means it's his mistake, all the other stuff is rumors, it's untrue. That's how they conspire against Yusuf and they send him to prison. He used to say, he was saying, oh Allah, like the, I prefer the prison to being in this fitna and trial. So he goes to the prison. Imagine someone has been through all of these negative events, one after the other. They would usually turn to Allah, why me? Oh Allah, why this, what does this happen to me? Like, why not someone else? You might not say it with your tongue, but as the Arabs say, بلسان الحالي بلسان المقال, right? That's what your heart feels, and it wants to say it, but you don't verbalize it. But you feel like, oh Allah, why me? What does this happen to me? What did I do? Yusuf was not in that state. So Yusuf when he enters the prison, there are two other people. When they see him, they see the beautiful face. Not only the, the handsomeness of him, but the righteousness, the beauty, the piety, the sincerity. You can tell. This is not a liar. This is not a dodgy person. Straight away, they assume this is a man of, must be a man of knowledge. He must be wise. So they narrated their dreams to him. One of them said, Inni arani a'siru khamra. I saw myself making wine. The other one said, I saw myself in my dream having bread on over my head and birds are eating from that bread. Yusuf understood with the interpretation of the dream. Don't forget, his first dream was interpreted by his father and this was a promise of his prophethood. So before telling them about the, the dream, since these people are interested, he decides to tell them about something more important than their dreams. About Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Since they're open, they're open-minded, they're willing to listen to him, now it's time to tell them about Allah. Because these people don't worship Allah, they associate partners with Allah. So he starts telling them about Allah, that he's the only one who has the right to be worshipped. He's the creator, the designer of the universe, of everything. And we should worship him, he's alone, we don't associate partners with him. And he started speaking about them. Then he says, 
in the midst of all of this, imagine this predicament, this trial, he's put in prison unfair, you know, unjustly, and in the first place he was taken from his father, all of these predicaments, the news of Islam, what is he? He's so chill, like he's so chill in the prison, he's not even, he's not traumatized. If someone went, goes to prison now, and I mean, there's no real cause for, for, for his going to, to prison, they might lose their faith. They really, they might question, why does Allah do this to me? Why does, why does Allah allow this to happen to me? So Yusuf alayhi salam tends to, he tends to them telling them about Allah. Then he says, ذَلِكَ مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْنَا وَعَلَى النَّاسِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَشْكُرُونَ He's saying this is from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us and upon people, but most people are unthankful. Man, you just put in prison and you're talking about thankfulness? <laughs> you should be talking about oppression, right? We talk about oppression. We're oppressed and put in prison unjustly. The case is all fabricated. So he should start speaking and making a case, right? You guys, we need to rebel, we need to do this, we're, we're put in prison, this, it's injustice, we have to stand for justice. But it wasn't about this, it was about Allah. He said, there's so many blessings from Allah upon us, but most of us are unthankful. Then he says to them, this is from what Allah taught me. This is what Allah taught me. It's not my knowledge. It's not like, don't think it's my intelligence or my merit. That's something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Refer it back to Allah. Because truly, we don't own, we don't own that. Allah gave you that knowledge through people, through experiences. Whatever you have and whatever you claim to yourself is really a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to be tr truthful about it, it's not about you. Even the fact that you pray in the masjid, you don't own that. Allah allowed you. Allah inspired you. Allah gave you the tawfiq to pray in the masjid. So don't ascribe anything to yourself. So Yusuf alayhi salam, after this he interprets the dreams for them and he says one of you obviously will be crucified then birds will eat his, blood, uh, his body. The second one he said, you will serve the king. And then he told him, you know, remember me. Remember me. And that shows as well when you can use something, use a means to get somewhere, use it. Nothing wrong with that. You're putting your trust in Allah doesn't mean you do what you are supposed to do. You wanted to get your rizq doesn't mean you don't study, you don't get a profession, you don't get skills, you don't apply for jobs or you don't make your own business. No, you have to do it. This is how the world works. Trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means you put in the work. But if you're not putting in the work, you're not trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're just fooling yourself. So then Yusuf alayhi salam, the man forgets and Yusuf alayhi salam stays in the prison for so long. For so long. Then uh, when the king has the dream, the guy remembers, he calls upon Yusuf, he gets the interpretation. Yusuf gives not only an interpretation, but a solution. Now with this solution, the king says, I, I want him for me. I want him. I want to see this guy. He refuses. He says, you need to clear me of the charges. I stand for myself. I stand up for myself. I stand up for myself. Clear me first of the charges. So they investigate, they clear him of the charges. He grows in the eyes of the king. This man is not so desperate to get out of prison. He's not so desperate to be close to the king. This man of principle. He is a man of principles. Yusuf, he's offered, I want you to be close. The king says, I want you to be one of my assistants. He says, he asks for a position. He says, Give me the treasure, the treasury. Sort of minister of finance. Give me that position. Inni Hafidun Alim. I am an honest, I'm a trustworthy person, Hafiz, Alim, and I have the skills and the knowledge. Isn't that self promotion? Nothing wrong with that. If it's true and you deserve that position and you can actually do a very good job there, you should actually speak for yourself. Yes. But don't lie. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't be super extra righteous where you put yourself down when you can do something good. That's an opportunity for him to be more influential. So he starts designing the whole financial system in a way to deal with the famine that was coming after that. Seven years, seven years, seven years. Then he deals with all of this. Then Allah brings his brothers to ask for help because they were in a drought. Yusuf and Egypt were ready for that. So now he has the power over his brothers. It ends up basically with his father and mother coming to Egypt and then his dream becoming true when they all prostrate themselves before him because at their time prostration was okay, was a sign of respect. But in our Sharia in Islam, it's haram, it's shirk. You only prostrate before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Yusuf alayhi salam, throughout the process, he maintained three things. And that's, these three, th three things are available to every one of us. And they're quite simple, they're quite easy. You will find Yusuf alayhi salam, first of all, 
is thankful throughout the way. ذلك من فضل الله علينا وعلى الناس ولكن أكثر الناس لا يشكرون. This is from the great blessings of Allah upon us, but most people are unthankful, ungrateful. And he says, رب قد أتيتني من الملك وعلمتني من تأويل الأحاديث فاطر السماوات. He says, Oh Allah, you have taught me so much, and you have given me so much power and position. So he's thankful to Allah. Every time he's thankful. You never find Yusuf in any story complaining about things that happened. Why did they happen? Not at all. He doesn't even feel negative about them. <laughs> he just feels optimistic. Why? Because he's been thankful. He's always thankful. Even the hardship is thankful for him. He's, he's thankful in the hardship. This takes me to the second one. He's thankful when there is a blessing. Number two, when there is hardship and predicament, he's patient. No complaint in the whole surah. This really son doesn't complain. He doesn't even say to Allah, Oh Allah, take these women. Why did you bring these women into my life to, to give me so much trouble? He didn't say that. He said, Oh Allah, I prefer prison to these women. <laughs> he didn't even object to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is his politeness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's patience. Shukr, sabr, and the third one was what? Taqwa. This is why when his brothers asked him, they said to him, Allah, uh, they said, Allah has favored you up over us. When they figured out that Al Aziz was Yusuf and he has all this power and this is the guy we got rid of, we thought he was dead, and now he is the Minister of Finance and he controls, controls the country. Uh, he says to him, in, He says to them, Whoever has taqwa and patience, Allah will never waste the efforts of the muhsineen. So these three themes are so powerful in Surah Yusuf. When there is hardship and challenges in your life, you need patience. Hold on to patience, beautiful patience. When there is blessings and ease, you are thankful, shukr. When there is obligations, you have taqwa. So do what you are commanded. Be thankful for the blessings. Be patient with the calamities and the hardships. And life would start working for you. Period. Life will start working for you. But the challenge is to have these three things in your life. It's challenging. When there's an obligation, you fulfill it. That's taqwa. When there's haram, you keep away from it. Taqwa. That's number one. Number two, because there's an expectation. But then life places a demand on you, an expectation on you. If it's a hardship and challenge and a misfortune, what do you do? Patience. When it's a blessing and ease and times of tranquility, you are thankful. You literally, you could use these in any situation in life and they will make things work for you.